All right. Hi, everybody. So today we're going to actually start talking about bacteria. So remember, we're now in domain um, archaea or domain bacteria and kingdom archaebacteria or kingdom eubacteria. Okay, so when we're talking about bacteria, we're talking about single-celled organisms. They're very tiny, not as tiny as a virus. Viruses are a lot smaller, um, but they like to live in warm, dark, and moist environments. We'll actually do a little um, experiment where we'll find some bacteria, and we'll look at it um, inside the school or on your body. All right, so um, they're found almost everywhere, anywhere. So the desk you are sitting at right now has bacteria on it. Your face has bacteria. Your hands have bacteria, okay? So bacteria is everywhere and anywhere. But remember, you have a really good immune system to fight it off if it's a bad bacteria, okay? So um, what you need to know is the characteristics of bacteria. We've done these before, okay? Um, they're autotrophs. So they can make their own food through photosynthesis. And you want to write down that word, photosynthesis, okay? Um, so we're in the box of your note sheet right there, okay? Uh, so they can be autotrophs. They can be heterotrophs. Again, it just depends on the type of bacteria, all right? Most of the bacteria we're going to talk about are heterotrophs, meaning they feed off of others. They are unicellular. All of them are unicellular. And they are all prokaryotes. There is no nucleus. Oops, cell does not have a nucleus. Let's finish that statement. So those are your fill-ins there. Uh, photosynthesis for the chart. Uh, unicellular and no nucleus. They do not have a nucleus. Okay, so make sure you fill that in for the characteristics. All right, moving on, there are two types of bacteria that we're going to talk about, the good and the bad. So the good, um, if you like yogurt, if you like cheese, if you like sauerkraut, all of those things are made with bacteria. Um, they aid in your digestion. In direct, today we'll talk about the ecosystem inside of you. You're actually made up of more bacteria cells than you are your own cells. So there's a lot of bacteria in you. It is a good thing. It helps you digest your food. Okay. The bad bacteria is what can cause disease. And we'll talk a little bit about the diseases, uh, bacterial diseases, as we get further into this unit. But things like strep throat, eye infections, like pink eye, um, pimples, right? Big old zits are made from bacteria that get in your pores. And then you get a pustule, right? Some pus that's there and um, it's because of bacteria. Uh, MRSA, we'll talk about that. That's a resistant strain of bacteria. Finally, the second type, and again, we're just in your notes right at the very bottom, okay, where you're going to write in different types of good and bad bacteria. And then the other type of bacteria we're going to talk very little about is cyanobacteria or blue-green algae. This is the one autotroph. Um, you know it as pond scum. It's the stuff that lives um, on the top of ponds, or if you um, haven't cleaned your pool in a while and it gets really green, you have to shock your pool with chlorine. That kills the cyanobacteria. It kills the bacteria. They reproduce really quickly. Um, they're really not harmful. You wouldn't want to drink a lot of them, you know, but they're really not going to harm you. Um, they can be harmful to fish and things like that because they can use up the oxygen in the water. But we're not going to talk about them too much, okay? All right, so make sure you have down on your notes good and bad bacteria. All right, moving on, there are three shapes of bacteria, okay? So this is a picture of bacteria, the three shapes. There's round, rod, and spiral-shaped bacteria, all right? So now we're on the inside of your note sheet. Oh, there we go, inside of your note sheet, okay? Shapes of bacteria. So there are the spiral, there are the rod, and there are the round bacteria. What we're going to do is we're at, oops, sorry, let me go back. We're actually going to draw them in our notes, okay? Let me go back one more slide. So when I look at spiral-shaped bacteria, it's given the um, suffix spirilla, okay? When I look at rod-shaped bacteria, it is given, let me move my head up here, okay? It is given the suffix bacilli or bacillus, and round shape is cosi or coccus, all right? So those are the suffixes that go with that, and that will make more sense here in a minute. So what you're going to do in your notes for the caucus for um, 
the round shaped bacteria, you're going to draw it in chains. This is round bacteria in chains. You're going to draw it in pairs where there's just two of them, like a pair of shoes. Or in clumps, and that's like a cluster of grapes, um, kind of that same shape. So round bacteria, they come in round shapes, and they can either be in chains, pairs, or clumps. Rod-shaped bacteria, it's given the suffix bacillus, and it kind of looks like hot dogs or chain-linked fence kind of deal, and they kind of line up next to each other. Spiral-shaped bacteria is really just like a squiggly line. That's what they look like. And we'll look at them tomorrow in direct. We'll have a little lab where we look at them. Okay, so the reason these scientific names are important is when we look at actual bacteria and their names, we can see that bacillus is rod-shaped bacteria. Coccus, Staphylococcus meningitis, this causes uh, meningitis, which is an infection of your spinal fluid, which is bad, uh, are um, paired round bacteria. Okay, and we know it's round because of that suffix. We know these are rod because of the name bacillus. Okay, and then spirilla is uh, this guy here. These are, they're not always named um, with that, but spira is on there, so we know that that's a spiral-shaped bacteria. Okay, so you should have uh, up to part three in your notes, classification of bacteria by their shape filled in, front page and up to that part. Tomorrow we'll work on the organelles. That's it for now. Uh, you're going to work on your keying bacteria worksheet. So this is the other worksheet you should have picked up. You're going to use the dichotomous key here at the bottom to identify the shapes, oops, over here, the shapes of the bacteria. I will tell you right now that number two on your picture there of your keying bacteria, number two has a heavy covering. So that'll make more sense as you go through the key, but number two is the only one that has a heavy covering. If it has any part that looks like a rod shape or a hot dog shape or a bat shape, um, like a baseball bat, um, that is rod shaped bacteria. Okay? So you're going to fill out this side and then you're going to turn it over and you're going to try and tell the difference between viruses and bacteria. Either just put yes or no in the columns that work there. All right, good luck, and I'll talk to you soon.